I'm gonna go over five keyboard shortcuts in Jupyter Notebook that every programmer should know because they're gonna save you a lot of time. And make sure to stick to the end because I'm gonna be giving you a full list of all the Jupyter shortcuts. All right, so the first keyboard shortcut is B. And this is something that every programmer should definitely know because it's the one that you're probably gonna be using the most often. So let me just jump over to my Jupyter Notebook. Over here, I just have a cell that says print hello world. And if I want, if I didn't want to use the shortcut, but I wanted to create a new cell below that, then I have to go to insert and then insert cell below. And that's just really inconvenient because in my, usually my Jupyter notebooks, they contain a bunch of cells. So if I keep on clicking insert and then insert cell below, insert, insert cell below multiple times, it's going to get really annoying and it's just be going to be really time consuming. So a better way to do this is just click on B and that's just going to create a new cell like that. And you gotta make sure that you're not selected inside the cell. So right now you see that it's highlighted in green. You don't wanna you, you don't wanna say B, because that's just gonna type inside the cell. So what you gotta do is you have to click if you're if you see this green color right now, you gotta click on escape, and then you'll see the blue color, which means that you're outside of the cell. And when you're outside of the cell, you can use the the Jupyter shortcut, which is B. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. All right, the second shortcut that you need to do is DD. And this is useful if you make a mistake and you just want to delete a cell. So here's what it's going to look like. Okay, so if I want to get rid of all these cells that I just made before, then I got to make sure that I, I don't see the green color because that means I'm inside the cell. So I have to click on escape to see the blue color over here. And then I'm going to use the shortcut DD, which is going to get rid of cells. So I'm just going to get rid of all these cells just to clean it up. And so now we're back to just this single cell, which is where we started off. The third one is control enter, and this is just gonna automatically run the cell that you're currently on. So if I wanna go inside the print hello world cell, then I, all I have to do is just click on enter, and that's automatically gonna take me into the cell, and you can see the change in color. So again, if I wanna get out of the cell, click escape, you'll see the blue color. If I wanna go inside the cell, click on enter, and that's gonna show you the green color over here. And if I wanna automatically run this cell, then do control enter and that's just gonna run the cell with that has all the code in it it's really that simple the fourth one is m and this is really useful if you want to remind yourself what your code actually does because sometimes you look at your code that you wrote the previous day and you don't even know what you wrote so it's basically like a comment in python but i like the markdown feature better because you can have a bunch of different fonts so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on b which is going to create the new cell and then i'm going to click on m and if I do that, then you see that this part, it just went away, which indicates that we're in the markdown cell now. But if I end up wanting it to change it back to Python code cell, then click on Y and you're going to see that the letters appear back. But for this, I'm going to just click on M and then click on enter to enter the cell. And then I'm going to say hashtag title. So if I do control enter, then you can see that the text is pretty big and it's bolded. But... If you want to make it smaller, then you could say, you could add more hashtags. So you could say hashtag, hashtag, and then subheader. And so the more hashtags, the more hashtags that you have, the smaller the text is going to be. So subheader two. And so you can see that this is one hashtag. This is two hashtags. This is three hashtags. So it gets smaller and smaller. And you can also have text, certain phrases that are bolded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to do, this is a test sentence. And let's say that I just want to bold the test sentence phrase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around two underscores. So I'm going to do underscore, underscore here. And I'm going to do underscore, underscore here. If I run that, then you can see that the other part outside of the underscores, it's just a normal text paragraph. But the part that I put on wrapped around underscores, it's bolded. And so there's just a bunch of different things you can do with Markdown. I'll put a link in the description below that has all the Markdown features and you could just check it out on your own if you're interested. All right, this last shortcut is Shift Tab. And in my opinion, it's the most useful one because it basically lets you, it gives you information on the arguments for each method. So if you're stuck on what to put inside a method, it basically tells you what to do. All right, let's say import pandas as PD, and I'm gonna do control enter and then click on B to create a new cell. Click on enter to enter inside the cell, and I'm gonna say pd.read CSV. And then, if let's say I forget what to put inside this method, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click inside the parentheses and do shift tab. That's gonna give me this whole a bunch of arguments of why I need to put in. 
And so it tells me that I need to put in a file path. But if I'm still confused, then I can just go to this arrow over here, click on that, and it's gonna, be, gonna give you a more in-depth overview of that method. So over here it says that it's there's a bunch of other arguments that are optional. And so if I scroll down a bit more, then it's gonna give you the doc string, and this just tells you the purpose of the arg the method. So this tells me that the read CSV method, it's gonna read a CSV file into a data frame. And so I can scroll down a bit more and it tells me more about the arguments. And so for the file path or buffer argument, it takes in a string and it's a file-like object. And so it says that it needs to be a URL. So this tells me that I need to put in for the for the read CSV argument, I need to put in the URL of the file that I want to import. It's pretty neat because the shift tab shortcut is basically a dictionary for the method. All right, that's it for this video. If you want to see the full list, then go to your Jupyter notebook and click on H. It's going to give you all the Jupyter shortcuts, including the ones that I showed you in this video. Anyways, if you want to see me code in Python in the Jupyter notebook, then make sure to check out this video over here where I'm going to web scrape data using a library called Beautiful Soup. So hopefully see you there and thanks for watching.